How are you feeling after the, the weekend? Uh, well, not too bad, to be honest with you. Um, You're not doing another walk, you moving there then? No, we've got a few points, just kind of a few yeah. goals, uh, so I don't know, obviously. Yeah. The type of game it's played in, yeah. it's a tough place to go as well. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a daunting place to play and um, yeah. well, a few boys kind of feeling yeah. good. So. Is it close to international rugby that? When you're playing yeah, the definitely. Rugby? That's that's the biggest thing in the Highland Cup. Um, that's just a step yeah. below uh, international rugby and um, obviously yeah. for some of the players it's the first time they've experienced yeah. playing in that sort of environment. And, um, yeah. Hopefully they'll, they'll come good for the weekend. Yeah, how, how does a player like Samson, you know, he's only just come through on the regional level and then he's thrust into a, you know, a cauldron like that. How, what do you tell him? To I think obviously Samson is um, in the World Cup 20s, I think yeah. that's, a, that's another step up yeah, and um, yeah. you know, he's experienced all of that, yeah. that level. Um, yeah. Obviously he's a tough place to go yeah. for a 19 old and yeah. um, up against one of the probably best yeah. packs in in Europe and uh, yeah. he's, he's only going to get better by playing and yeah. he'll take a lot from our game in terms of uh, the experience of it and uh, yeah. I thought he did yeah. do quite well considering it was his first outing out in yeah. uh, a tough place like Clermont. Yeah. You took it to them first half hour didn't you? Yeah I think that was pretty much what we, we trained for in the week. Um, there's a couple of things we probably didn't execute well in terms of the, f the first half which kept Clermont in the game. Um, and obviously, the second half was uh, a different story. Yeah. Has it been difficult to pick yourself up after after last weekend? No, not really. I think uh, just going from the first half in terms of the way we started the game. That's what, yeah. I mean. That's the way we planned all week, taking the game to them. Um, it was frustrating to go down to fourteen men, but I mean that's yeah. that's the game of rugby for you. Uh, I thought yeah. we did okay when Stodds went off for the first ten minutes. Um, yeah. And obviously, second half, then they exploited the area where we were down and uh, without the winger. So, um, no, we had soft for Clement for exploiting that area, and uh, it's something we need to learn in, in the future if that happens. But in terms of the way we played, you know, we created a lot of chances, we just didn't finish them off. And um, we knew we gave them a, a game in the first 40 where we were down for 10 men for 10 minutes as well. So. Plenty, plenty of positives to take out of the game, and um, like I say, I'm just looking forward to playing back here now on, on Saturday. Does that make it easier to, to pick the players up after a defeat, knowing that you've got such a, a huge game ahead on, on Saturday? Yeah, definitely. I think um, one thing the Highland Cup is it's quite easy to get up for any game um, because of the, you know, the value of the, the competition and how big it is. And um, for us playing back here, part of the Scarlets, we know we, the, the atmosphere is going to be great for us. and. Uh, we know how important uh, this game is Saturday in terms of if we've got any ambitions of going forward into this uh, big competition. Because Claremont, you mentioned they're close to international standards, nice to run the team in the front row and guys like Carl Strauss, who you'll be up against, is that another uh, battle that excites you? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, there's no easy game in the Highland Cup and uh, obviously there's a lot of players who've had experience in terms of playing Highland Cup rugby and international rugby and uh, that goes in both squads, so it's important. Uh, on Saturday again, we, we start the game well, um, and probably just cut out a few individual errors, which probably cost us um, going in half time, uh, sixteen thirteen out in Claremont. So um, well, there's plenty for us to work on, but there's plenty of good stuff as well. So as, as much as I'm very disappointed with the result on Saturday, um, well, it's easy for us to, to get ourselves up for this game on Saturday now. Some um, points away from the from the lineup, you think of no, uh, George North moving the first half, that sort of thing. Um, do you mind for someone like Leo Cullen, who's you know, got a reputation for being a bit of a spoiler in the set piece? Yeah, definitely. It's something which obviously we do a lot of analysis on and making sure that uh, come Saturday that we've got our priority calls ready in place f for uh, the Leinster. And um, I think that's one area which has been going quite well, well for us at the moment is our set piece. Spend a lot of time on it, especially at scrum time as well. Obviously, with uh, Samson coming in, who needs that that time uh, at scrum, um, and pretty much our line has been functioning really well this season. So, for us, we've got that confidence going into this game anyway. And I mean, we came up against uh, a good forward pack on Saturday, and pretty much not far off in the percent line out. So, um, 
Yeah, we, we've gone for as much as obviously got to go cut and we'll try and spoil our line-out. I think uh, we've got a calling process in pitch which we can uh, definitely win ball. Uh, you've seen the analysis that Exeter seemed to cause Leinster a few problems at the scrum on Saturday. They did, they did well. I mean, what do you make of that that's area there, set piece? Um, well, for starters, I think Exeter have been outstanding since they've come up from uh, Division 1. I think uh, one thing they are a hard working team. Uh, I don't think they've got any superstars in it this side, and uh, they fight hard for each other. And I think um, not only they've got a good set piece, a strong set piece. Just watching them over the last couple of weeks, um, they give Northampton a good run for the money in terms of scrum as well. So it's one area which um, they're very strong at. Um, obviously, Leinster again uh, is something we'd probably be looking at this week in terms of targeting our scrum as much as we want to target theirs as well. So for us, it's only it's about getting our own house in order and making sure that our set piece is, is spot on uh, because we know, you know the back line we can put out is. is Fairly formidable, and um, if we can supply them ball, I'm sure they they'll do some uh, dangerous stuff. You pack down with some tight ends over, over your career. Samson Lee, I mean, he's very young, but how good is he, and how <coughs> good can he be? Um, he's got a lot of potential. Samson, obviously, he's still very young, and um, the only way he's going to get better is by playing. Um, obviously, I know we we played well, and they had the manly match against the Dragons a few weeks ago. And uh, worthy of a start, obviously out in Claremont. But um, you know, the big, biggest thing for him is, is, is obviously playing, playing at uh, places like Claremont. Um, and he's willing to learn. You know, I mean, after every scrum, he's always asking, "Is there anything we can do better? Is there anything which you shouldn't be doing?" And um, that's what you want. Uh, so for us, we're lucky, obviously, with with Danny coming in on board as well, who's technically sound in terms of scrum. And, Line out, and uh, obviously Danny's been working with him over the last couple of years in terms of the with his under twenties. And with Samson, one of the young tight that comes through with well, just because Adam has been the man for so long, everyone sort of says, just put him in the well squad straight away. What 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 were you thinking in terms of his development? Because you know he's such a young age for that sort of position. Well, he's only played a handful of games at regional level, hasn't he? So yeah. um, it's important that we, we do look after him because we'd want him to get out, hang out to dry in, in terms of putting him straight into the yeah. international game. But uh, no, he's definitely. Uh, Massive uh, prospect for the future, um, and he's he's hard nosed as well. And if you can get a tight dead like that, it's very hard to come by. And um, fair play, I think he's he's important to the team as well, um, especially moving forward. Um, but you know, it's it's a positive for for Scarlets and Wales that we've we've just found a tight dead who's who's going to be serious in in the future. I suppose that's scrum though against Claremont. Probably just as tough, if not tougher, than a lot of the international packs you'd face. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, you've only got to look at the quality through the, the yeah. front row and mm-hmm. sort of back five. Um, and again, you know, we, we've, as a player, we've, we've faced uh, big challenges in terms of international games, but you know, it's, it's for Phil and obviously Samson, who started on Saturday, for them to come up against um, Alexa Domingo and that's really the, 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 that sort of type of player is uh, is good for them to get experience of playing sort of just below international level and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll make them play better players as well and especially for Samson at the young age who we've, oh, he's had that experience now and um, he can move forward You talked about uh, Richard's uh, Richard Strauss a bit earlier uh, what, what do you make of him as a player you know, what are his strengths uh, well, he's a Quite solid set pieces, isn't he? And he's, um, I think he's a main ball carrier for, for Leinster as well. He does a hard graft, and uh, I think you know, he's been outstanding for Leinster since he's gone there. And um, well, he's going to be a tough task on, on Saturday up front. Uh, but I mean, that, it's not just Richard we need to worry about. I think um, obviously, like if he slip, we go Cullen, these players. I mean, they. Uh, They've been around a long time. The experienced players, and they're the players that make Leinster tick as well. Uh, obviously, he qualifies for Ireland this year, and there's been whispers, you know, he could be a dark horse for the Lions. Do you think he's capable of going to that? You know, you've been there, done that. I suppose. You yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's form, isn't it? I think the, the, I mean, looking at the Lions, it's this long way, yeah, way yet. And um, at the end of the day, for, for me, if if you're going to be on the Lions tour, it's about performing well in Six Nations and then being involved in Six Nations squad, whether Irish, Scottish, English, or Welsh. Um, yeah, it's, it's all 
well and good if you're on form now, but that, that's the biggest time to actually get your performances is probably Six Nations time. Mm. There's always a lot of talk as well that uh, the pack perhaps isn't Leinster's strength. I'm sure you disagree with that and uh, you know, accept this big, big challenge this week with that back row in particular. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I mean, Le- Leinster are a tough team. They, they've got a good forward pack and they've got a great back line as well. So you can, there's no sort of weakness there. Um, but for me, when it's Saturday, is about just starting the same way we started out in Claremont yeah. and um, just making sure we maintain that right to the death minute um, and hopefully staying, staying with 50 men on the field. The Bolton squad named on Monday, Matty. I mean, the performances in these two games can help players in their quest for that. Can they? Definitely. Um, obviously, the, the selectors will, will know that the level of Highland Cup is just a step down from international level. So if you were playing well in these big games, um, obviously you know, all you're holding hand up for selection for autumn, and um, I think that that's that's the biggest thing for us, obviously as well. Is certain players probably on on the fringes making the, the Welsh team or squad, um, and with a performance like that, I think Claremont um, first half okay, second half come and stuck. But uh, for us, we've got a. No, I mean, obviously there's them individual battles going on as well for, for selection, but for me it's just important that we get this result on Saturday if we've got any ambition in terms of uh, going forward in this competition. Because you know yourselves, like if, if, if you lose a home game in this competition, yeah. that's yeah. pretty much it. So uh, yeah. we, know, we, know, yeah, we know how big this, this game is. I mentioned to George about the intensity of that first period in Claremont. Is that something you can replicate or break? It's not something... We see week in, week out in the Rallo. Yeah, definitely. I think you know I mean? <laughs> the, the, the biggest thing for me on the weekend was um, the way we started the game. Um, there was even uh, certain parts of the game in the second half when we were with 40 men and mm-hmm. we created opportunities against Claremont with 15 men. And it, I mean, it, you know I mean it's, a, it's a tough place to go, Claremont is to play. Um, I mean, the crowd are behind them, there's drums banging, and um, it's a lot of old players. Um, Really, um, sort of experienced that in the past, so I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an eye opener for them as well. But uh, personally, we, I thought, no, you take away the second half. First half, we, we were there at the races, and um, we've got to take a lot from that in terms of the Heinen Cup and how important it is for us. And uh, we just know that you know, this Saturday is, is a must win, and um, it wouldn't be. No problem, boys, again, up for this Saturday.